primary burr. We start the burring by removing the main burr, called in the special literature the primary burr. The primary burr is created by grinding and is one-sided. We can feel it by brushing finger across the edge on one side of the blade, but not the other. We can see it naked eye. The finer the grinding grit, the smaller is the primary burr. The primary burr is the burr that we remove on the Tromac leather wheel with the honing compound, or on a paper wheel with autosol or diamonds, or on a felt or cotton wheel with autosol or green rouge, zam and alike honing compounds. Secondary burr. Honing creates a secondary burr, a small micro burr on the very edge. Because the secondary burr is not one-sided, we cannot feel the secondary burr tactilely by brushing finger across the edge. You know that you have removed the main primary burr when you cannot feel the burr by your finger anymore. At this deburring step it has transformed into the secondary burr which is a micro burr on the edge apex. The varieties of the secondary burr are feather burr, wire edge and foil edge. We can see the feather burr naked eye at a certain angle by the light scattered from it. The wire and foil edge cannot be seen naked eye, but we can see them with magnification in a microscope. The wire edge is defined as a product of honing when the root of the burr is polished into the edge rather than removed. As we start cutting, the secondary burr falls easily and sharpness drops dramatically. Microscopy of the bent burr follows. Contrary to that, a properly deburred edge is less susceptible to rolling and dulls chiefly by abrasion. The secondary burr in the form of the feather burr and wire edge is removed by honing on rock hard felt with a fine abrasive at a higher than the edge angle. Can also be done by a high angle honing on a leather strop or wheel with a fine abrasive, but the rock hard felt works the best. Note that high angle honing removes the feather burr and wire edge, but does not always remove the foil edge. Where the knife steel is harder, the high angle honing exposes the true edge apex and we see immediate improvement in sharpness and edge retention. But when the knife steel is more malleable, the high angle honing moves the metal damaged in grinding to the edge apex, where it hangs in the form of a thin foil. We clean the foil away in the finishing cleanup step and expose the true edge apex. We get rid of that foil either by stropping on a plain leather or cotton hanging strop without any abrasives, or by one two passes on a paper or leather wheel with pure chromium oxide. Leather fibers in a strop have the same diameter as the shaving razor apex, about 100 nanometers. That the strop leather fibers match inside the razor edge makes the leather so good for fine stropping. Generally, the chromium oxide works better than a plain hanging strop. In the finishing step, we clean up the edge from any weak metal left after the burr breakout 
to get a strong apex that provides for longevity of the sharpness. The true edge sharpness is what we get after the finishing cleanup, not straight after the high angle honing. We do not use felt in the finishing cleanup because being the most aggressive of all honing substrates, felt can overhone and drown the sharp edge. Positive and negative burrs. The secondary burr can be positive or negative. All said above refers to the positive burr. Mainstream knives form the positive secondary burr that hangs on the edge in the form of the feather burr or wire or foil edge. There is, however, a group of knife steels in which the burr chips off during honing. These steels are relatively brittle, of high hardness, high carbon, and rich in wear resistant alloys. Even the primary burr formed on them in grinding is much smaller and not as easily detectable. The negative burr knives never form a wire edge, let alone the feather burr. But honing still can draw the steel matrix over their apex into a foil edge. Honing of knives that form the negative secondary burr is done strictly at the edge angle from start to finish. The foil edge, if any, is removed by the same methods as used for the mainstream knives. There is also a wide group of knife steels in between. Certain steel properties make the secondary burr more negative, while others more positive, and this determines how we deburr them. Deburring methods that are right for the given knife steel give better sharpness and better edge retention. Details are in the knife deburring book.